Coming up on Saturday, February 27th, the Springfield Symphony Orchestra will mark Black History Month with a very special evening of performances, including something that's extra special to us here at WGBY. Springfield Symphony Music Director, Maestro Kevin Rhodes, came in to tell us more. Porgy and Bess is uh, certainly uh, one of the premier American operas, right? And, and uh, although it's very famous for uh, a number of the songs that are in it, it really is a full-blown opera. Uh, there isn't any, uh, any sort of spoken dialogue or anything. And uh, so it, it's a really, it's an incredibly important work. And, you know, uh, and Gersh, Gershwin is, uh, uh, you know, he sort of stands at the whole beginning of the the blending of jazz styles and classical music, uh, you know uh, the, uh, the the uh, the 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 Rainbow Room meets Carnegie Hall. You know this was uh, he was really the pioneer in all of this, and uh, and Porgy and Bess is really his probably his masterpiece. I think we would have to say, and uh, and there's also something about Porgy and Bess that uh, it, it can only be performed in in any sort of complete version uh, with African-American singers. Uh, you, you're not allowed to put a, a, a white porgy in there. You know, that might uh, not make so much sense with the plot anyway, yeah. but it, it is official in this regard. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a very, very special piece. And of course, at this time, uh, in America, there were so many places where African Americans they couldn't even go, yeah. let alone perform. So you know, it was a really a very forward-thinking piece for its day, and perhaps remains so uh, to this very day. And uh, and indeed, a good many uh, very famous African American singers uh, got their operatic start in Porgy and Bess. William Warfield and Leontine Price, no. just being two of the yeah. most famous examples. Uh, but the list goes on and on and on and uh, we have a fantastic quartet of uh, singers coming uh, to present the main roles uh, Bess and Serena and Porgy and Sport and Life and uh, we're going to be doing about between 60 and 70 minutes of the opera uh, which indeed includes all of the big famous highlights that we all know and love Summertime I Ain't Got Plenty of Nothing Oh, uh, oh Lord I'm On My Way There's a Boat That's Leaving Soon uh, but it also has lots of the connect tissue as well uh, that sort of tells the story. It has a big role for a chorus and they're rehearsing hard and working right now to get all of that ready and of course lots of big passages for the orchestra as well. So it's a real tour de force for the whole ensemble and I think a really uh, a great treat for our audiences. And that's only a part of <clears throat> what's happening on stage. Absolutely. I want to talk more about that but let's talk about something you folks are doing marketing wise to make it a little easier for folks to get in to town. They don't necessarily have to drive. They can ride a party bus in. Mm -hmm. So the thing you've put together, Dinner and the Symphony. Right. With the Peter Pan folks. Absolutely. Dinner at Student Prince. Exactly. Three course meal. There'll be pickups by the party bus at a couple of different locations, I guess, in the suburbs. Right. What a great idea. Oh my gosh, I'm really thrilled about this because this is something that uh, I've been wanting to get going for a long time and, and all of the people uh, that, that we work with at the symphony, uh, this has been an idea that's just been years in the making and I'm so thrilled that uh, our new executive director, Peter Salerno, has been able to pull all of the pieces together with Peter Pignelli, a uh, big supporter, obviously, mm -hmm. of everything that goes on in Springfield mm -hmm. and, uh, and so it's just a fantastic thing whereby uh, if you call our box office, they can give you all the details. Yep, yep. And, and so you can, uh, you'll be able to go to someplace close to you, get on the bus, come on down, and then you'll get bussed from the, from the restaurant over to the concert hall. And, and it just, I think, will make for a fantastic uh, evening out for everybody and with just the absolute simplest of uh, planning means. One phone call away. Back to the evening itself. Yes. We're very excited about it here at Channel 57 because you're working with an increasingly known composer, Joseph Schwantner. Yes. He's special to us. Of course he is. Because his son, Chris, is our chief engineer and our uh, IT guy. Right. Who were always, Chris, my computer. Tell us about that. He, you're, you're going to have a performance of a work of his, New Morning 
for the world. Exactly. And, and I should also say that, you know, Mr. Schwantner is, uh, uh, I don't only, uh, not only me and, uh, and Chris think he's swell, uh, but he's a Pulitzer Prize winning composer. And uh, he's, uh, his works have just been played by all of the major orchestras of America uh, for decades and all around the world as well. And, uh, and a couple years ago, Joe and I uh, uh, connected here at Together in Song. I was hosting. Joe was one of the judges, and, and I said, I, I really want to do something of yours here in Springfield. Uh, okay, what would you suggest? And he directed me straight towards this work. And, and it was actually this work, New Morning for the World, which was sort of the uh, impetus for this entire concert, uh, because the work is for narrator and orchestra. And what the narrator narrates, uh, or actually I should say speaks, recites, is maybe a better way to put it, are excerpts from selected texts of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so uh, in, in, in preparing the work and, and re-reading through all of these excerpts, it's really uh, very fascinating how many of these, uh, these, these uh, excerpts from his speeches uh, are really the kind of things we still need to hear. Uh, they, uh, you know, he was definitely uh, um, speaking to the world, if you will, uh, not just a, a select group of people. And the power of this incredible music with these words is just amazing, just on the page by itself for me uh, as a musician studying and learning the score and hearing it in my head. But for our audience who will be coming on the 27th to hear it, it's going to be an especially amazing experience because we have uh, the uh, world-known actor uh, Avery Brooks coming to do the narration. And uh, I happen to be in possession of a of a recording which is not a public recording uh, but from a performance that uh, Mr. Brooks did with the Atlanta Symphony and uh, and I tell you uh, hearing him in these texts this incredible actor at his incredible way of of, of painting words with the inflection of his voice is just one of the most uh, goosebump inducing uh, experiences that I've had sitting in my own house. Uh, and, uh, and I'm really, uh, I'm a, I've been a fan of Mr. Brooks for, for a long, long time, and I'm quite thrilled to uh, be bringing him to Springfield and really quite excited to be working with him and to be sharing what I think is really going to be a very unique experience with all of the people that will be in Symphony Hall that night. Well, it's going to be an amazing evening. Yes. February 27th, marking Black History Month with the Springfield Symphony Orchestra. Maestro Kevin Rhodes, always an honor and pleasure to have you with us, sir. Thank you so much, Jim. It's great to be here.